We are back covering CES live here in Las Vegas for Digital Trends and it is so great to be back because we uh, had a bit of a power outage there. And when I say we, I mean Las Vegas. Grids went offline and uh, lost power. All of the halls at some stage did not have any power at all. It was all covered over social media. If you saw it, whoo, it is probably the worst place to have no power being an electronics show, but we are back at it right now, which is fantastic. And it didn't actually interrupt our schedule too much. So. We're back at it now here at CES live in Las Vegas for Digital Trends and I'm so excited to talk to the guys from Optima and to help me out with that sitting at the table, we've got senior editor right here, Caleb Dennison. Hey, good Welcome to be back, back Thank Caleb. You. Yeah, you know, I actually spent a lot of time in a dark room uh, reviewing projectors like we're about to talk about, so I was perfectly fine with the power outage. Uh, I don't <laughs> think anybody else was. You need electricity to make this stuff work. And uh, yeah, so I took a little bit of time. I was actually in the central hall when it went down. So I just toured around to some of the different TV manufacturers and made snarky comments about inky black levels. No, <laughs> nobody laughed, I don't understand why. But uh, yeah, we made the best of it. I'm really glad to be back. Um, yeah, we're here with Opti uh, New Force. Mm. Um, we've got our two guests, uh, Jeff and Yuri here. And uh, I want to start talking about this projector. Is I get that right? Did I get it? John. The, John. I'm so sorry, John. Okay. That's all I'll right. You know what? I'll this that is the magic of the live stream. Um, <laughs> but John, uh, I want to talk about the projector that you brought sure. up here today because just a year ago, if we started talking about 4K projectors, we were talking about $10,000 minimum entry. I mean, they right. were way up here, super lofty. If 4K TVs had sort of trickled down to uh, every man price levels, uh, 4K projectors were still very much out of reach. Right. That changed when Optima uh, introduced the UHD 60, which, if I'm not mistaken, was not just under $10,000, it was under $2,000 when Correct. it was introduced. Um, it hasn't been out that long. I mean, I just got mine a few months ago. I've been reviewing it. I've been enjoying it. I think it's an outstanding projector. Um, and you already have another one to tell us about. So what do you have here? We do, thank you, yeah. So we were the first to do 2K under 4K, or 4K under 2K. Right. I said that backwards. It, that's okay. That's anyway, so <laughs> what we have done is to implement the latest technologies from Texas Instruments. So we're full UHD, CTA compatible with all 8, 000, 8 million pixels on the screen at once. And we've got a new model out called the UHD 50 that we are shipping very shortly, like in the next couple of weeks, we've announced this week. It'll be at a $14.99 price point. Then there's going to be like a step up product, and that's the one I brought with me. Um, it's called the UHD 51A. So the, the, the two projectors will look very similar, very similar engine inside and all that. What we've done is we've added an Android operating system to that UHD 50, and we've given it the ability to have Amazon voice commands. So totally across your daughter Echo, control your projector. I am shocked that Alexa is coming up at this table again. <laughs> Absolutely shocked. No, I'm not shocked because Alexa is everywhere and it's a big toast of the show. Um, we're seeing it in a lot of devices yeah. and in some cases I'm thinking, man, people are just adding Alexa because they need to have Alexa, but there are some extremely useful use case scenarios for using Alexa with a projector. Um, one of the biggest complaints that I have about many projector companies and the, the remote controls that come with them is that they're not backlit, which is the craziest thing in the world because where do you watch a projector Ooh. in a dark room? In I'm the sorry. dark. You, yes. you knew that in the one. Dark. She was ready. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she beat me. But you know, when you don't have a backlit remote, even when you do and you don't know where it is, it can be it kind of a hassle if you need right. to pause your movie, if you need to uh, make an adjustment uh, to the, the picture settings or something like that. So why don't you tell me about how we could use Alexa with this projector. Right. Perfect, certainly. So, a couple of points to that. First one is, we've gone back and looked at our customer service logs. And in the home space, one of the more common calls we get is, I've lost my remote. So, what a great remote, but your voice, it really is. And that's mm -hmm. the idea. So what we've done is we've taken 18 of the most commonly used commands and embedded that into the, uh, in, in this with the Alexa voice so, con control. So, power on, power off. I want to switch my sources. Let's go HDR mode, change HDR from aggressive to less, you know, you said color, absolutely. Go from game mode to movie mode, right? So your latencies and all that. So all of that has been added here. And the point is, if you have lost your remote or you can't find your remote, I don't have to worry about it. So it's, you know, hey Alexa, change my HDMI source, and boom, it happens. That's really and excellent. it is that use case that you're talking about that it makes sense because it solves a real, a real problem that we all have. 
Now, if you have a smart home set up and you've got some scenes set up, mm -hmm. is it addressable uh, through Alexa or through perhaps um, another control system like Control 4 or Crestron where you can say movie time and you know your lights dim and the projector turns on and it switches inputs and stuff like that? I, that's where we're headed towards. Right. Um, initially, I'm not sure we're going to get there, but initially, but that's where we want to go. And you just did another good, you hinted at another point that there's multiple devices. I mean, how many remotes do we have in a typical right. home entertainment system? Well, let's do away with one of them at the, at the display level. Yeah, so if you're using uh, Fire TV as a source, for instance, you could be Alexa, using Alexa to launch the content you're about to watch on the projector, which you're also controlling with Alexa. Correct, and it wouldn't matter, right? It doesn't matter which device you're talking to because Alexa to doing is the determining item that says which device to send the command to. And it makes so much sense for like a high-end home theater because that's, I mean, that's the kind of magical experience that you want to have in a really fancy home theater with a yeah. big screen. I love it that is, stuff. It's just done. So um, I want to get to some questions if any are being asked on uh, social media. You know, we're just getting our stream uh, live again. Uh, but for those of you who like to geek out on projectors like I do, um, we're talking about a, about 2,400 lumens of uh, output for this projector, which is great. That's, that can do battle with a little bit of ambient light, but obviously right. black levels depend on absence of light in the That's room, right. so the darker you can get it, the better. Um, you can scale this up to about what size of an image? 120, 130. We've yeah. seen it in a perfectly dark room to 150. Right. And we'll see where it goes. Right? And that's what, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, you can go bigger than that. You lose brightness but a little bit. But you do start to lose some of the brightness and some of the saturation. And when you think about it, when you're talking about, uh, I mean, for the non-Alexa version, $1,500. And how much would, did you say so the? It would be $1,699 for so, this piece. So under $1,700, yeah. there's no way you're getting a 120-inch image no. for your, uh, in your home, let alone a 4K one. Um, we have two HDMI 2.2 compliant ports, right? That's correct. So that means that you don't have to route everything through an HDMI 2.2 compliant receiver if you have, uh, say, an Xbox One X and right. you want to run an Ultra HD Blu-ray player, you can go into both of the ports yes. and switch yes. back and forth with, uh, with Alexa. Yes, absolutely. That sounds awesome. Mm, that is good. Actually, we're a lot of chat about uh, Alexa in the chat here because we are live. Uh, Dan Baker wants to know why you chose Alexa rather than, say, Google Home. So when we were looking at it, it came to a question of which we can get to market with fastest and, and in the, in, for us. And the development kit was a little more... I guess the right phrase, way to put it, it was more developed when we were putting it in, the, in for this piece, and it's a little more ubiquitous. You think of the overall ecosystem that's already created, it matches up a lot with a lot of our existing channels that we're already selling the product into. So it almost comes down to timing. It does. In many ways, it does. Yeah, wow. Yeah. Well done, Alexa. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> thank you. So uh, we're going to see uh, these models come available when? Towards the end of the, in the March time frame. So towards the end of March, we'll have them out and shipping. Spring. I mean, yes. that's, and that's when we see a lot of these new products. Although I, I have to say thank you for letting us know what the uh, ballpark price yeah. point's going to be. Mm. Because so many other manufacturers don't talk about yeah. price yeah. when they come to CES. So that's super exciting. Thank you. Awesome. Um, get one to me, please, so we that I can start reviewing <laughs> it. <laughs> and I can start said, barking please. commands at Alexa <laughs> as soon as you can get it, honestly. Absolutely, we'll, we will. We'll move things along. Opta and Newfos, obviously, a new uh, merge happening. And with this comes the wireless earbuds. And Yuri, you're going to talk us through those. Yes, yes. So in about two and a half, three years ago, Optima acquired a company called New Force. So New Force is a California-based audio company, and we are actually one of the pioneers in Class D power amplifier design. So we started at the very high-end level audio products, amplifiers, uh, digital, amp uh, digital analog converters, headphones, and so on. And along the times when we were being successful, we saw that there was demand for small portable devices, so we started moving more towards mainstream products. Now, of course, now like Alexa, smart devices, everything is wireless, so we have also moved to wireless earphones, and that is our main business at the moment with Optima. And I want to make a clarification here because I think people are still just now starting to understand that we're talking about truly wireless earbuds. Correct. Most people know their wireless headphones as if they're, we're talking about earbuds as having um, either a cable going between the mm -hmm. two, or maybe they have that sort of halo neckband thing mm -hmm. going on with the buds popping out of them. Mm -hmm. These are truly wireless earbuds. You put one in one ear, one in the other ear, and that's it, right? They connect to each other, and then Correct. they connect to your device. Correct. So what, what's the model number on these? Uh, and can you tell me a little bit about um, how they're different than the wireless earbuds that you've produced before? OK. So this, the model number is called BE35. So this is our new product, which we announced at CES, and we are going to release this product in early April. There are a couple of things what we have found that customers who are looking for truly wireless earphones they, 
they, they want to pay attention to these certain aspects. And one of them is, of course, the Bluetooth connectivity and what we can do there. And, and the other one is fits, how comfortable it is, can you wear it for hours, and so on. And the third one is sound quality. In terms of the, the connectivity, so what we actually did is that we took Qualcomm's latest truly wireless designed Bluetooth chipset. So it was launched in 2017, and now 2018 we are releasing this product. If we compare to chipsets which are designed for truly wireless use, this has the best RF performance. In addition to the RF performance, of course we need to look at how we can apply the antenna in the product itself and how we can make sure that it actually works. So what we did is that we built the antenna just below this button here so that it's in the most outer kind of a wall of your earphone and so that it can go outside of your ear and your head is not blocking it. Which is a great idea because, I mean, we have tested just about every truly wireless earbud that's come out from mm -hmm. a number of different companies mm -hmm. and the biggest complaint that we have is a slightly dodgy connection, not just with your device but also with each other so that they can stay in sync. It sounds exactly. like you guys are using the latest wireless technology Correct. to make sure that you get a rock solid Correct. connection. Plus there are, there are a couple of different options available but this is the one which has the best performance in terms of the the, the, the radio frequency response. So I notice it looks like the, you've got some wings on those. So that's to add a little bit of security. It's, it looks like you could use these if you're working out. Yes, correct. So these are actually sweat proof and IPX5 water resistant. So you could go shower with this if you want <laughs> and it's not going to break down. We don't recommend necessarily doing it, but if you want to listen to music... I might actually do that. <laughs> now that you've said that, I see myself showering with your earbuds. Right. So I hope that doesn't sound weird. There are a couple of things. This is small and very lightweight. It doesn't sound weird. It's okay, okay. That's good. <laughs> So it's very small, <laughs> small product, uh, it's lightweight. So the purpose of it is that because it's so small, it fits your ear very nicely. What we actually did here, it's interesting that this, this inner surface of this, we, we worked with a third party research company who have done a 3D scan on over 2000 ears. And we took that research and we built this, this design and this shape based on the research so that it would be most comfortable to use. Then after that, what we did is that we, we built this nozzle so that it mo changes the weight balance a little bit and it pushes the earphone inside your ear instead of kind of allowing it to fall down. Now when you're exercising, that's not necessarily enough. So then you have these, these wings in different sizes that you can apply and you can make sure that it stays on. Which kind of, you know, crooks into this section of your ear and holds it Exactly. Fast. Now, I've noticed that a lot of the truly wireless earbuds are made intentionally small, like super mm. tiny. The idea is they're less obtrusive. Um, some people might feel they're more comfortable. I also know that they're doing that to bring the weight down, but one of the trade-offs there is uh, there's less space for a battery, and mm. therefore battery life suffers. Can you tell me a little bit about how long these are going to run mm. um, on their own independent charge, mm. and then, um, how many times can you charge them with the case, and uh, how long does it take to charge the case itself? Okay, good questions. So the earphones itself is four hours. Then when you add the charging case, you get extra three full charges, so 12 hours, so 16 hours in total. What we have there also is so-called quick charge. So 15 minutes of charge, you get one hour battery life. If you want to get the full 14 hours plus the charging case as well, it takes about one and a half hours, roughly, maybe two hours. So if I use them on a long flight, you know, uh, and I kill them on my flight to New York, but I know I need to, you know, make a phone call or something like that, mm -hmm. have, have use, once I get where I'm landing, 15 minutes in the, in the case and I've got a full hour of talk time Correct. after that, or exactly. listening time. Exactly. And actually the call is a good thing because we have a microphone in this product and we have the buttons on the side. So when you're using, you can use it on calls, so you can answer, connect, or actually you can use this with Google Assistant and Osiri as well. So you can activate those and talk and ask what's the weather like and so on. Awesome. I, I wanted to go on with the, using the ear earbuds in a plane because a lot of the time with the sound cancelling headphones I mm. don't like wearing the huge ones mm -hmm. and I have very misshapen ears. So it's exciting to hear that you know, you've tailored the bud to fit the shape. But I want to know how much um, excess and outside sound is it blocking? Very good question again. <laughs> so actually because of this design <laughs> because of this design, it isolates very well. The other thing is that we are using so-called SpinFit ear tips. So there's a company called SpinFit which designs these ear tips and we cooperate with them and build our own custom tips. So what this tip has is this small space inside so which allows the tip to rotate. So when you put it into your ear canal, the tip actually tilts a little bit and it provides a better seal, so it isolates even more. So during the flights, of course there's some noise, it's not using active noise cancellation, but the passive noise cancellation is so good that I would say that you're 
you're not going to need the, the uh, active noise cancellers anymore if you don't need to isolate so much. I don't yeah. want to say that your ears are misshapen. That seems <laughs> a little hard. But I mean, everybody does have a different uh, sort of shape to their ear. Uh, not just shape, but also the size uh, mm -hmm. going into the canal. And so that's why we see a lot of different sizes of ear tips included with some mm -hmm. earbuds. Can you tell me how many sizes of ear tips are you including? And are you including both silicone and like uh, comply or some other sort of a foam ear tip? Uh, at the moment, we are only using the silicone tips. The reason for that is that there are actually comply tips which are soft foam, which will work very well with this. We are using the silicon tips because we feel that these are enough for most of the users. Well, I think that they tend to sound better uh, because, you know, with the comply tips, you roll off a lot of the treble, mm. uh, the high frequencies, and so you either have to tune the, it seems like you have to either tune the, the, the earbuds to use comply tips and mm. amp up that, uh, that high frequency stuff so that it balances out when it's you know uh, right. traded off with that comply tip, right. or just you know what, use a, uh, a silicone tip, which I personally think is easier to keep clean um, right. and we feels comfy. We actually have a question about that. Awesome. I think Martin um, Devliers, yeah, Devliers <laughs> says, uh, "What do you use to clean them when they get clogged with wax?" Smiley face. <laughs> So if you get, if you, well, there's a filter inside, so the wax is not going to inside. And like I mentioned, it's IPX5 certified. So even if you get a little bit of wax, you could basically put even water on it and just right. get it off. If you want to clean the tips very well, you can use like alcohol wipe or something. If you lose your tips, you can call us and we will provide you new ones. Oh, that's really cool. I like to drop mine in a little, uh, one of those little mini vodka bottles, you know, <laughs> and just sort of shake it around because then they get sanitized as well. Oh, there you go. Uh, Baron Don't Young actually the vodka out the was. Bad, no. Because we are talking a lot about wireless at the moment. Um, having wireless devices in and around your brain, he wants mm. to know, are they safe? Well, of course, we cannot talk from the, um, from the recess aspects, but if we look at how Qualcomm, for example, classifies the Bluetooth devices, we would say it's safe, and we need to rely on the technology and the technology provider and their research and their studies. Cool, okay, sweet, thanks for that. We are live, by the way, yeah, so thanks to everyone tuning in around the world to ask your questions directly, it's really cool. So, um, I think, you, did you mention these are coming out uh, around April, sometime in the, sp the spring as well? Yes, early April. Okay, cool. Well, we will definitely pull those in, get them in for review, and uh, see how they uh, work. I think that we actually just got the previous version from you guys as sort of a reference. We're building up, we have this cool little spot on our desk of like all the <laughs> truly wireless earbuds that uh, have been put out there. So we're definitely looking forward to checking those out. I would and like one little question in before we go. Jermaine snuck it in with, what types of devices can you use it with? With any device that supports Bluetooth. So this is Bluetooth 4.2, which means it's backwards compatible. Right. So you can use any iPad, any Android device, any computer. So basically anything that supports Bluetooth. Which includes Fire TV. Like, so if you want to listen privately, uh, you know, if you're streaming Netflix or whatever and you don't want to disturb your, your friends, you can stream Netflix straight to those things through right. a Fire TV, yeah. Well, wait, if people want to find uh, out more about Optima and what you're working on it's at CES, especially if they experience the power outage or they're not here at all, where can people find uh, more about the, the products? So, go ahead, John. <laughs> go, John. Yeah. OptimalUSA.com. Easy. Easy. And Optimum you guys are located uh, here we're at, uh, not, not at the convention center, yeah. but over at the Westgate? Yeah, we're over at the Westgate. Yeah, so if you're show. checking us yeah. out from the show itself, head over to the Westgate. You can go check out all the different yeah. products that are available there. This is an excellent projector, but they make a whole bunch of them. And uh, some really, really incredible high-end high stuff, too. Thank you. Yeah. You're projecting some Thank high you. figures as well, so that's great. That's Thank a pun. You. Thank you, John. Thank you, Yuri, so much for stopping by Digital Trends here Thank at you. CES. Stick around, though. We're going to uh, chat computers coming up next, especially processors. That's exciting. Don't go anywhere.